Okay, class, today we are in section 7.5, extension part one. 7.5, extension part one. Relate geometric sequences to exponential functions. Relate geometric sequences to exponential functions. Make sure you have this title in your notes. The key vocabulary, geometric sequences, and common ratio. Your goal is to identify, graph, and write geometric sequences. Goal, identify, graph, and write geometric sequences. In a geometric sequence, the ratio of any term to the previous term is constant. This constant is called the common ratio and is denoted by R. A geometric sequence with the first term A sub one, or just A one, and common ratio R, has the form a sub 1, a sub 1 times r, a sub 1 times r squared, a sub 1 times r cubed. For instance, if a1 is equal to 5 and r is equal to 2, the sequence 5, that's the a1, 5 times 2, that's the a1, times r, 5 times 2 squared, that'll be that term. And 5 times 2 to the third power, that'll be that term. Or, if you multiply everything out, 5, 10, 20, 40. It's considered to be a geometric sequence. Example 1, identify a geometric sequence. Tell whether the sequence is arithmetic or geometric. Then write the next term of the sequence. A, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Solution, the first term is A1 is 3. The first term is A1 equal to 3. Find the ratios of consecutive terms. So when we do the ratios, we say 6 over 3. A2 over A1, 6 over 3. Then we do A3 over 2. A3 over A2, excuse me. So that's the third term over the second term. Then we do the fourth term over the third term. And then we do the fifth term over the fourth term. Like so, like so, like so. Because the ratios are not constant, the sequence is not geometric. To see if the sequence is arithmetic, find the difference of consecutive terms. Notice when we did the ratios, we came out with two, one and one half, one and one third, one and one fourth, not constant. In order for it to be an arithmetic sequence, these terms have to all be the same. Now to check on the arithmetic part, it's pretty simple. A2 minus A1, six minus three, that's three. A3 minus A2, nine minus six, that's three. A4 minus A3, that's 12 minus nine, that's three. A5 minus A4, that's equal to 15 minus 12, that's 3. Everything's the same. So the common difference is 3. So the sequence is an arithmetic, uh, an arithmetic sequence. The next term of the sequence is A6, that would be the next term. That would be A5 plus 3. So the fifth term plus the common difference, which is 3, that gives us 18. Okay, now let's look at B. 128, 64, 32, 16, and 8. We follow the same format as we did uh, for part A. So the first term is A1 equal to 128. Find the ratios of consecutive terms. Ratio, uh, term 2 over term 1, that gives us 1 half. Term 3 over term 2, that gives us 1 half. Term 4 over term 3, that gives us 1 half. Term 5 over term 4, that also gives us 1 half. So we can see that the common ratio is 1 half, 1 half, 1 half, 1 half. Because the common ratios are constant, the sequence is geometric. The common ratio is 1 half. The next term in the sequence is a sub 6, that's our next term, is equal to a of 5 times 1 half, which is equal to 4. a of 5 times 1 half is equal to 4. 
All right, for those of us who may be a tad bit confused, the sixth term is equal to the fifth term times one half. Well, what's the fifth, the fifth term? Look up in your table and you see the fifth term is going to be eight. What's eight times one half? That was a common difference. Excuse me, the common ratio. Eight times one half is equal to four. Example two, graph a geometric sequence. Analyze a graph. Notice that the graph in example two appears to be exponential. Notice that it appears to be exponential. To graph the sequence from part B of example one, let each term's position number in the sequence be the x value. The term is the corresponding y value. Then make and plot points. Then make and plot the points. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Those are our x. That's based on the, um, the number's position. And so each uh, corresponding value, 128, 64, 32, 16, 8. And then we graph. And that's all there is to that one. No more, no less. <laughs> Functions. The table shows that a rule for finding the n term of a geometric sequence is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to the n minus 1. Notice that the rule is an exponential function. And you know that because it's raised to this power. All right, now analyze this table. Position n term a. For the nth term, you multiply a sub 1 by r times n minus 1 times. Now, they went through everything in this table just to bring about this key concept. General rule for a geometric sequence. The nth term of a geometric sequence with the first term being a1 and a common ratio of r is given by a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Okay, make sure you read here very carefully. Use function notation. You can write the geometric sequence with first term a sub 1 and common ratio r in function notation as f of x is equal to a sub 1 times r to the x minus 1. Now this is in function notation. f of x is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to the x minus 1. It means the same as the formula below, just in function notation. Example 3. Write a rule for a geometric sequence. Write a rule for the nth term of the geometric sequence in example 1. Then find a sub 10. That, mean, that means find the 10th term in the sequence. Solution. To write a rule for the nth term of the sequence, substitute the values for a sub 1, that's the first term, and r, that's the common ratio, in the general rule a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Because a sub 1 is 128, that's the first value, and you found the common ratio to be 1 half, you end up with a to the n is equal to 128, that's your initial value, times 1 half, that was the common difference, excuse me, the common ratio, raised to the n minus 1. The tenth term of the sequence is a sub 10. Notice how the n was replaced with 10 because that's the, um, the, the term you're trying to find in the sequence, the tenth term. That's equal to 128. That's the first value. Times the ratio. That's r. That's one half. n, we said was 10 because we're trying to find the tenth term. Minus 1. So now we have 128 times 1 half to the 10th to the 10 minus 1. All right, now don't forget this is the sequence you were working with 128, 64, 32, 16, and 8. The first term, the a sub 1, is 128. The common ratio, 128, half of 128 is 64. Half of 64 is 32, half of 32 is 16, half of 16 is 8. 
Now, the way you would figure that out normally is you would have to write down 64 over 128, 32 over 64, 16 over 32, and then 8 over 16. At any rate, it comes out to be 1 half. So that's where the 1 half comes from. That's the R. That's the common ratio. All right, now, the N, that's the term we're trying to find. That's the tenth term. So right now we're at one, two, three, four, five. This would be six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're trying to find the tenth term. So that's why we put ten here, and we put ten right there where the n is. All right, now let's do the basic math for those of us who may be confused. All right, we're right here, and we wrote this over here. So I got one twenty-eight times one half raised to the 10 minus 1. That means I have 128 times 1 half raised to the 9th. That means I have 128 times 1 to the 9th over 2 to the 9th. That equals 128 times 1 to the 9th is 1. 2 to the 9th is 512. So now I have 128 over 1 so 128 times 1 is equal to 128. 1 times 512 is equal to 512. If I were to divide this out on my calculator, I will come out with 0 0.25. 0 0.25 is equal to 1 fourth as a fraction. Now I could have just reduced that down to 1 fourth. And here, I could have rewrote 0 0.25 as 25 over 100 and then it was still reduced down to one fourth. Okay, you are ready to begin your work. Let's complete all the problems in the practice.